We would not be here today if the Obama policy in the Middle East wasn't naive and arrogant, misguided, and dangerous. And that's why people like myself believe that he threw Israel under the bus. Incivility in our political system. Fear has replaced fact. Paranoia has replaced dialogue. But this isn't new in American political history. On May 14, 1948, at 6.11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Harry Truman, as president, recognized the state of Israel. And it was a grand and glorious moment for Israel. But uh, in the weeks and months leading up to recognition, Truman encountered massive opposition from Zionists, the American Jewish community, and prominent rabbis around the country. What the Israelis asked for was about 10 things from President Truman. What Israel needed was trade agreements with the United States. They needed loan guarantees. They needed immigration exchanges. They needed cultural exchanges so that uh, Israeli orchestras and scholars and artifacts are traveling the U.S. And Federation and birthright trips and American professors are going to Israel to cement the bonds of friendship. They needed missile defense. They needed key vetoes in the United Nations. They needed joint intelligence sharing, joint military operations, joint commercial development. And Truman delivered nine out of 10. Here we are 60 some years later and Harry Truman, according to David Ben-Gurion, Ambassador Abba Eben, and the great Dr. Heim Weizmann, all of them consider Truman to be a father of Israel. While what we hear today, online, over office water coolers, and Shabbat services, on the tennis court, is that Obama's no friend of Israel. But let's take a look at the facts. You know that there are people in the United States who, who criticize President Obama for not supporting Israel strongly enough. Do you believe that President Obama is a very strong supporter of Israel? He is an extremely strong supporter of Israel in regard to, to its security. Uh, I don't... Uh, traditionally, President was supporting Israel in keeping its quality military age and taking care of its uh, security needs, but this administration is excelling in this. Uh, and it could not have happened without the... A immediate direct support of the president. So I don't think that anyone can raise any question mark about the devotion of this president to the security of Israel. I want to thank you, Mr. President, for standing with Israel and supporting peace through direct negotiations. I think this is a, this is a badge of honor. And I want to thank you okay. for that. Thank you. Thank you. Obama put together probably, arguably, I would say, the greatest trade agreement in Israel's 63-year history. Israeli products are selling like hotcakes in the United States, and it couldn't have come at a more fortuitous time because all around the world, Israel products are being boycotted. Obama cemented the cultural exchanges, immigration exchanges, billions of dollars in loan guarantees, more missile defense than any president in history, key vetoes in the United Nations, and during the disastrous Turkish flotilla incident, when the world community asked Obama to criticize Israel, he refused to do it. If we look at the 10 items that the great founding fathers of Israel asked Truman for, Truman delivered nine out of 10 and was considered a father. Let's take a look at what Obama's done. He's delivered in his first year alone, all 10 out of 10. So what can we do as concerned American citizens, as voters, as friends of Israel? We can start by checking the facts and making sure that we get out the truth.